So, good morning. Welcome to our latest uh, education session for Accountable, how not to waste money on websites. So, Accountable, we are Silver Zero Partners and we are a TAMES agent for accountants and tax agents Institute of New Zealand. And uh, last night we were um, finalists in the excellence award for the New Zealand Bookkeepers Association. So now well we have to wait till the end of July to actually get that one. Find out if we won that award or not for Bookkeeper of the Year. So this is us. Uh, we've got some really big exciting news happening tomorrow, so check us out on Facebook Live at 2 o'clock. Um, but we do bookkeeping, financial accounting, um, business development, so we can help you with your strategic plans. And um, our specialty, as quite a sad specialty, is financial recovery. So those businesses in financial difficulty, we can actually help turn you around. We negotiate with Inland Revenue and we can generally do some really great things to help you survive. We do have a number of you today, so it's up to you whether you want to ask a question or whether you want to use the chat function down the bottom of your screen. You can actually just send a message just to me or you can send it to the entire group and I can then interrupt Catherine because I enjoy doing that sort of stuff <laughs> and, and throwing her off guard. So by all means, make sure that you actually do ask questions. This is about your education and if you're thinking it, I can guarantee someone else is as well. So this is Catherine. Um, Catherine and I have been doing quite a bit of work together and the feedback that I get from her webinars is absolutely stunning. The reason why I like working with Catherine is she actually empowers business owners to understand what they're trying to achieve. And it actually makes marketing a lot simpler. Um, so I'm not going to rave on about Catherine because her, her knowledge actually speaks for itself. And so I'm now going to hand it over to Catherine and she can actually wow us with her brilliance. Um, Are you okay with that, Catherine? I am. I'm sorry. I'm really distracted because I've got me here and me on my website here. And I look like the before and after has gone the wrong way around. <laughs> so apologies for anybody expecting me to look like that. This is the real face at the moment. I need a, a, a new personal branding photo shoot to reflect my um, maturing years. Well, on the 29th of June, Catherine, we're actually running a personal branding webinar. Feel free to register and join us for that I one. I am absolutely going to do that. Um, so hello, everybody, and welcome. I Let's kick off. I will just share my screen. And if I do that one, can everybody see that? Yes, we can. Yep. Cool. Um, some of you, I think, came along to the session that Hayley and, Hayley and I ran a couple of weeks ago. It was pretty much the same premise, but how not to waste money on marketing. Um, once again, I struggle with the way that we've phrased the English on this, uh, how to not waste money, how to, doesn't seem quite right, but I hope it gets the point across. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Catherine. I studied marketing way back when that Nokia was a very desirable phone. I had one. Don't hate me for it. Uh, don't be jealous. Uh, I've had nearly 20 years marketing experience at all those place, places listed. And I also got a bit jaded with marketing after some bad experiences, decided I hated marketing and taught myself to build websites, which makes me, uh, or which I feel like makes me qualified to host this webinar today um, about building websites. Something that I found when I was building websites is that there tended to be a lack of the marketing overview and I felt that that was something that I could really add to my clients was approaching website building with a marketer's hat on. So we'll be going, some of the things that we'll be going through today uh, also speak to marketing. Um, for those of you who 
aren't aware of quite how cynical and sarcastic I'm capable of being. I'm not actually a huge fan of inspirational quotes. They tend to make me gag. But in my last presentation, I started with a quote and I was Googling around to see what sort of quote can I find about wasting money on websites. Um, I have to say the pickings are pretty lean, but I did love this one that I found on Pinterest. Getting a quality website is not an expenses, but rather an investment. And that's somebody called Christopher, which I quite like a quote that's attributed to a Christopher. Um, but Christopher is exactly right in my view, although um, I think the translation has not come through that well. But a website is an investment, not an expense. Actually, before we get started, would you be able to manage, Hayley, if people just wrote in the chat exactly where they're at with a website? So do they have one that they want to make work harder? Do they not have one yet? Um, are they thinking about getting a new one? If, you were, if everybody could just put in their own um, situation in the chat, and then Hayley, I'm gonna ask if you could summarize that for me later, because I don't know how to find the chat from this view. Oh, you're asking a lot, Catherine. I know. Make you, make you earn your keep. <laughs> um, but these are some true stories that uh, I've heard over the last couple of years about some of these, are a lot of money wasted on websites. Um, about eight years ago, I was marketing manager here in Hawke's Bay, but for a nationally known brand, and we... This was round about the time where mobile websites were becoming more important and we desperately needed a new non-dated website and we went to agencies in Auckland because that's what you did back then and the quotes for a new website ranged from $60,000 to $100,000 and that $100,000 website wasn't even content loading. They would build the basics and we'd have to do the content loading ourselves. Um, my bosses didn't buy that, I didn't think that we needed to spend that much money and I'm, that's good that they didn't, but that's um, the range of money that people are expecting at the high end. Um, one of my very first website clients had already paid somebody $7,000 for a website and they never used it because they didn't know how to operate it and didn't want to put any more money into the support. Um, I've got a service called Pick a Marketer's Brain, which is like a one-off consultation. And two or three years ago, I had a client come that just spent $12,000 on a website and they were looking for some marketing advice and that company still hasn't launched. So two years ago, they spent 12 grand on quite a flash website and they're not using it. So to me, that's a, a waste of an awful lot of money. Um, several years ago, I went to an SEO training course in the UK and there was a girl there who worked for a charity who'd spent £27,000 on a website and it didn't do what they wanted it to do. So she was there to try and, they'd, pay, they'd paid her for to attend a training course to try and fix some of the stuff, but £27,000 is, again, especially for a charity, a lot of money to spend to not get what you want. Um, one of the mums when my kids were at primary school, her son was learning coding in year 10 at Napier Boys and she said, oh, I'll get him to do it for me. <laughs> Never made any sales, didn't work for her, but at least she did have uh, the grace to say, well, I guess that's no surprise if you get a 14 year old boy who doesn't know about business and only knows about coding to build a website. And lastly, just recently, I was paid to fix up the back end of a client's website. They had uh, used a graphic designer who was not a website designer to design their website. Uh, it could well be award-winning, and I apologize for the terrible clip art, but it gets the message across. They would most definitely win a, actually I'd say that win a looks great, but never made any sales award. Um, these particular clients are happy to have a really, really great looking website. I feel like they might come to the point in a year or two where they realize they've wasted a lot of money because it's an e-commerce website and it's not going to make any sales because it's not been 
optimized properly. So uh, the webinar that we did a couple of weeks ago on not wasting money on marketing, uh, this slide is completely relevant with a few changed words for, to take into consideration that we're talking about websites. So the golden rules to avoid wasting money on websites, have a clear strategy. So that's like with anything, you need to have a clear strategy up front so that you're not wasting time, money and energy. You need to have an objective for every uh, for your website and you need to measure and evaluate your website. So back to strategy, uh, you might start off thinking you want a brochure site, for example. Do you guys all understand what I mean by a brochure site? So it's really just uh, for somebody to look at and to get an idea of who you are and what you do. Um, then you might later on think you want a social media feed. The problem that I see going quite a lot is what I call Franken websites. In fact, I think I've put that further down. Um, so you want to take time to really determine what you want. And here, having a clear strategy means you're really clear on what you're doing. Um, you're future proofing your website needs and you avoid a Franken website that's not fit for purpose for very long. So sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. But so what I meant is you might start out thinking that you just want a brochure site. Then you might get active on Facebook and think it would be a good idea to incorporate a Facebook feed. But if you haven't built your website initially in a system or in a way that accommodates a Facebook feed nicely, you've probably all seen websites where the Facebook feed just doesn't sit very nicely. Um, it starts to look terrible. Uh, you might then decide you want to move into e-commerce. And again, if you've not thought of that at the start and accommodated that, uh, I'm sure you've all been on sites as well where they make it hard to buy. Um, uh, the, the user experience is not there and you kind of realize that it's been cobbled together. Um, if you don't know what I mean, here's a, uh, a overwhelmingly disturbing view of what a Franken website might look like. So this is like, clearly this person is interesting um, and doesn't quite know what they want to say but it feels like things have been built on top of each other and every time you decide you want something new or some new functionality it's just thrown on there but it's not a cohesive whole uh, co cohesive whole spelt w-h-o-l-e sorry i'm just looking at my notes and was rather disturbed to talk, think about cohesive holes um, so having, having an objective for your website to give you a clear focus, where possible, make your objective measurable. If your objective is brand building, that's not so easy to be able to gather data to prove whether you're achieving your objective or not. But it can be quite useful to have something like you want to sell X number of Y products um, in a particular time period through your website because then say you've chosen six months, uh, six months time you go back and you can see have I achieved my goal? Or you might want 20 email inquiries or 20 leads through your website or you might want to, this is um, a real life example from several years ago um, I did some work for a client who had a lot, it was a big client and they had a lot of people calling into their call center with technical questions. And we pulled together a big database of FAQs and technical guides and that reduced the number of calls into their call center by about 35% because when people went to ring the call center, they, they were no longer doing that. They were reading the technical technical data on the website as well. So having a really clear objective means that your website is gonna be a lot more effective and you won't be wasting that money on the website. So listening to you speak, Catherine, 
one of the best ways of saving money would actually be to not jump in and just build a website. It's actually that understanding your business, your marketing strategy, all of that sort of stuff. And, and where you like maybe your business plan as well to actually get to know what you're actually trying to achieve. Absolutely, like a hundred percent. It needs to be integrated with your overall business plan. I see a lot of people that come in uh, wanting a website and we end up having to do the marketing strategy or a very basic marketing strategy first because you can't just jump in and say, you know, unless you just want a brochure wear site, which I feel like we've moved on past those days. I think people used to do brochure wear sites when they wanted a website but didn't really know why. Um, I think we've moved on and you need to know what you're trying to achieve and to do that, you need to know what your business is trying to achieve and what your goal and mission and all that kind of stuff is. So is there some industries, like you know how everyone actually says you've got to have a website, you're not a real business unless you're on the web or anything like that. Do you actually need a website? So if, if you're just Joe Bloggs that goes down the road and sews up pants for the farmers, do you need a website or is can someone actually overcapitalise on trying to be on the web? Oh, you can definitely overcapitalise. I've got a blog post that I wrote a long time ago about you don't need the situations where you don't need a website. For some types of businesses, I wouldn't say many, but there are some types of businesses where having a Facebook page or one of those, you know, um, Myob. You can get a one-page website on Myob. In yellow. Yeah, that sort of stuff. I wouldn't advocate for that, especially not in light of what's just happened in the last few months. I think in the old days, if you were a tradie that had excellent referrals and you were picking up jobs through referrals and you're booked out for the next six months, then you could argue you don't need a website because you're getting that work anyway. But I suspect that COVID-19 and the lockdown has upended a lot of that stuff. Um, I think the credibility factor, I'm just, I'm thinking of a couple of tradies and um, manual, like building type people that I know that don't have websites, but still, get the work because somebody has said yes they're they're good or you've seen for yourself work that they've done but I think if people are coming into you cold or if there's any chance that you're getting cold prospects then the website talk a website talks to credibility like you said there's the perception that a you know, whether you've paid somebody or done it yourself, but you are paying to have an online presence, um, you're, you can seem more trustworthy. I think the days are over when you could have a Gmail account as your business email. I know a lot of people still do that. And it always does make me think in the back of my head, are they going to be sticking around for too long? Because they're not willing or able to pay $40 for a business email, $40 a year, which is not a lot of money, um, is Gmail, but to me that doesn't talk much to credibility. So the reality is then a good website um, shows your, A, your personal brand, but also how professional and the quality of workmanship that you can actually deliver. So whether that's a product, whether that's uh, your knowledge um, it still actually gives someone that feeling of who you are and, and what it could be like working with you then Yeah and I think it also um, talks to your level of professionalism so have you just got a Yellow Pages free website or is there something more and I'm thinking particularly about a guy that I saw in a conversation on Twitter who said something that made me think he was in New Zealand and I wanted to find out more. And he was a website designer and a general pretty pleased with himself kind of a person. And I went onto his website. So I was looking at Twitter on my mobile. So it was mobile optimized. It, it, 
sorry, I was looking on mobile. It wasn't mobile optimized. It was just about one of the worst websites I've ever seen for being able to follow and read. You think you're a web designer. Like his whole thing was about being a web designer. And I know the old story about builders having the worst homes and roofers having the leakiest roofs. But I think if you're a website designer whose site is so like little mistakes happen, you can accept that, but your whole site is not mobile optimized, that's not doing a very good sales job, in my view. So then if we look at like we've sort of covered off professionals, you know, how they can actually do personal branding, that sort of stuff through websites. If this is a sort of a service based business. I still think that they could actually benefit quite greatly from having a good quality website. What's your think, thoughts on that? Oh, I think that it's essential. I, yeah. think, I, I think because of the nature of service-based businesses, yes, you will get referrals, but I still, because it's not something tangible, like you can't go and have a look at the new tiling or the new extension that somebody's built, it, it's just, you know, it's, it's intangible, a service that you need to be able to find out a little bit more about them. Plus, there's the nosiness factor. When I hear about people doing things, I want to go and check them out. And I don't always want them to know that I've been looking at their LinkedIn profile. So if you don't want to look at them on LinkedIn um, and have them notified of that, the website is the natural first place to look. Plus... Yeah. Ideally, if they've got their face on there, they know you know what they look like. And there's some really cool stuff you could actually do on a website with a service-based business with little videos and testimonials, and that could actually be quite fun. Anyway, sorry. No, that's I've right. sidetracked you. Carry on. That's right. So I've just, I went and clipped a couple of homepages just to give you a clear view of what sort of objectives are out there. So this in New Zealand... Clearly, there's quite a lot of choices you can make, but the primary choice is to book a flight that we can see right there. So that's a pretty clear one to me. Oops, sorry, that was going backwards, not forwards, page down. Um, icebreaker, I did half expect to see a picture of a merino sheep. I did expect a brand story and whether that used to be what they were like before COVID or whether they've been like this for a while. But this is very clearly about buying. So here's your call to actions. Uh, go straight in and either shop men's or shop women's. So I would be very confident saying that their primary objective is to make online sales. Minecraft, couldn't be clearer, download Minecraft. There's no distractions of saying, maybe do this, or maybe do that, or maybe do this third thing. It's very clear there's one objective to get people to download Minecraft. Um, and the next one is slightly different. This is Tiawonga Estates, the wine brand out in Tiawonga. And this clearly, so this would be a hard objective to measure, but I think they've done a really nice job. So this is a carousel, a revolving image on their homepage. And this is very much, um, it's telling a story, it's evoking a mood, it's um, creating emotion. You know, you're, these people are having a nice picnic on the beach, they're having a lovely time, they're drinking Tiawonga wines. Uh, so this is clearly more about, about brand building than selling anything. The only thing that I would suggest is it was four degrees this morning. When you look at this, I think if they had the budget, it would be nice to do a winter version. Um, but again, that's a very clear objective to build a brand, but it's harder to measure that one. Um, and the third is just to measure and evaluate your website. So keep your eye on your website analytics and unless you're brand building, uh, it should help you ensure you, you're on track to getting what you want. Hayley, do you look at your analytics? Yes, I do. How so I look at um, Squarespace, but also sort of the Facebook as well as 
um, Google Analytics as well. Because I was going to say, I was actually talking to somebody this morning who is always, he's very, very good at checking his analytics just about daily. And he was saying that he finds Google Analytics lately really difficult to get the information that he wants really quickly. And I don't know if many of you have looked at Google Analytics, but it used to be very narrow and simple. And now there's like 10 million things that you can measure, which can make it hard. So if you are on a platform like Wix or Squarespace or some of the others that have their own internal analytics, I think that gives you, it's probably not as rich an information, but it's much simpler to understand. Um, I will confess, I should be looking at my analytics more regularly. I have a monthly appointment in my calendar that pops up and says, don't, um, don't ignore, look at Google Analytics, but I quite often do end up ignoring it. So I don't check them as often as I can, but I do have a very clear idea in my head of what I'm trying to achieve. And I don't feel like I need to be looking at my analytics. It sounds like I'm making excuses, doesn't it? Um, I don't need to look at my analytics as much as I tell other people that they should. <laughs> I think one of the key things for me that I find on my website is the page that people land on and, and the journey that they take through my website and the page that I'm actually losing them on. So it sort of it indicates to me if it's that one page that I'm losing them on all the time, maybe I need to do something with that one page or... Mm. And so it's actually quite interesting when you see people go from this page to that page and then back to that page again and then off to somewhere else and then back to that page. So it's, it's an interesting journey. I think the problem for me with analytics is as the only person working in my business, there are so many things that, can, you, know, that you need to do that compete for your attention. And it's easy to get in an analytics rabbit hole, especially like that user flow that you're talking about. It's really fascinating seeing how people move through your site. But I know that if I look, it's going to eat up an hour or two of my life. And I quite often don't have time for that. So it's easy to put it on the back burner, but you shouldn't, shouldn't do it. Shouldn't do what I do. Do as I say. It's a true mummy's comment that one. <laughs> So, what should you spend on a website? And Hayley, I hope you will agree that this depends entirely on what your business needs. Um, the process that I'd suggest to try and figure out what is a good amount to spend on your website is figure out, first of all, what your website uh, needs to do for you. And then that goes back to what Hayley was saying, that you've got to know what, your, what you want for your business to know what your website should be doing for you. Determine a budget. Think about your return on investment. So say you were spending, or say you felt that you needed to spend $5,000 on an e-commerce website, how quickly are you going to get that back? If you're selling things that cost $5,000 or $1,000 or $10,000, and it's a well-optimized site, you'll get that money back quickly. But if you're selling $7 widgets, a $5,000 investment is going to take a very long time to pay back, even if you're wildly successful. So when, you, when you're thinking about how much to spend, think about what your likely return on investment is. Uh, once you have all that information, you'll need to make a hard decision about the best way forward. Um, my view is you need to aim for a website that's going to future-proof your business, not the website that's going to be the cheapest, because a cheap website will cost you more in the long run. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, Hayley, from your background? I mean, I, mean, I completely agree. We, we specialise with startups. Um, and so, you know, there's never any money around at the, at the beginning. A lot of people try and build their own website. And I mean, I completely and utterly advocate for that because a website is better than no website. Um, but at the end of the day, you need to actually understand this money that you're about to spend, what is that payoff actually going to be? Um, and you don't want to be 
I'm going to set up in business and I need to do a $10,000 website because, you know, we don't know, especially as a startup, you may go into this with an idea of this is what it's actually going to be and in 12 months time your business has morphed into something that you weren't really quite um, planning on but it's just sort of happened and if you've actually spent you know five grand on a website up front now your business is not actually reflecting what that website is it's, it's maybe not the right spend at the right time so and that's when it comes down to the business planning actually understanding what your marketing is going to try and achieve for you. It's about investing the money at the right time on your business journey, I think, is probably what I'm trying to say in a very long-winded way. No, that's really interesting because I hadn't thought about the fact that things might change for everybody because I've seen a lot of people come in and they've got the wrong website, it doesn't do the right stuff for them, and rather than fix it, it's actually quicker and cheaper to start from scratch, but that's still a big chunk of work. Yep. So in my head, I was thinking, do it right from the start, but maybe if you're gonna be doing it wrong anyway, do it wrong at $1,000 instead of doing it wrong at 10,000, if in a year's time or two years time, you might need to start from scratch anyway. Yeah, and I think that's the key thing is like, if you've been in business for five years, you understand your product, you know where you're going, you know what you're doing, you've, you've sort of got some a solid base to work from. So at that point, spending five grand or two and a half grand on a website is actually probably the right thing to do. If you are very new to this and only been in business 12, 18 months or even not even in business yet, but you're planning on it, then then maybe it is a case of actually not being so perfect and actually saving some of that money for cash flow with the idea that once you've got your business plan in place, your, your strategic plan, your um, marketing, you know exactly where you're heading, then you've got more cash flow to actually invest in the perfect website. Um, something that you said also reminded me of something that I wanted to say but forgot to put in my notes when you said something about being perfect. That's the great thing about websites. It's not printed material. You're not stuck with it if something changes. With a website, it's five minutes to go and make a change if something's not working or if something's not right. So it's very much, it's not a static thing. You know, if you wanted to, you could go and change something every day or experiment every day. And it's no big deal as long as you understand how to make those changes in the back end. And I think that's the key thing, like you can work with many developers and they will charge you 180 or $200 to update a spelling error or something along those lines. With technology the way it is and the various platforms that there are, it is actually really easy for a business owner to save that money and actually update it themselves with a little bit of training. So get the training, don't just play with it and, and ruin it, but get the training and then at least moving forward you can actually update it, you can do whatever you like to it, and it's not an ongoing cost. So, um, you know, there's also things like, um, well, developers, uh, website developers are going to shoot me, but um, you don't need to pay a website hoster to actually host your website. You can go to a third party like um, First Domains and a few of those ones and actually... Um, pay, wipe out that middleman, and actually that hosting is a lot cheaper. So, you know, $100 a year compared to three, four, $500 a year. So just really think about what you're buying when you do actually look at doing a website. And I know Squarespace has got somewhere between $200 and $300 a year. Catherine? I've got that coming up in a bit, but... Yeah. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. <laughs> I, don't, I have seen a bit like my example where we were quoted 60,000 to 100 dollars uh, 100,000 for a website i've also seen ridiculous hosting monthly hosting costs that i don't know how they justify sort of 70 dollars a month and they do nothing for you except send an invoice um, I, first domains, I use them for pretty much everything I do domain-wise. 
when it's my choice to. And they're not only the cheapest, they're the easiest and have the best customer service that I've come across. Oh, yeah, now you can pick up the phone and ask, have a question. Someone answers the phone within a couple of minutes. It's quite rare. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite nice to get something that's cheap and good. Yes. Yes. Um, and I think that's probably the key point here that we're trying to make, isn't it, Catherine? But shop around. You don't need to accept the first thing that's put in front of you because it may not be the right thing. No. So actually, it was the very next slide, Hayley. So here are some of your options if you're needing a website. You can build it yourself and the monthly hosting costs are listed there. Um, the ranges are down to, some of them are just a very simple site with not much functionality and at the higher end it could be full on e-commerce e if you're going through hundreds of products and thousands of sales a month. So you've got the likes of Squarespace, Shopify, WordPress, Weebly, Wix and uh, Rocket Spark, which is a New Zealand Company. There are, are plenty of others. I have put a little asterisk next to Squarespace just in case anybody is thinking of getting a Squarespace website and doesn't already. Um, let me know because I have a discount code that gives 20% off your first year if you pay for a year. So it's a significant savings and I'd be happy to share that discount code. With Build It Yourself, there are pros and cons quite naturally. So the pros being low cost and you get to have total control over your site. Uh, you can get it looking exactly how you want it because you're the one doing the building. Uh, cons, you do have to do it all by yourself. Uh, learning the CMS, that's the content management software, can be a steep learning curve. Uh, depending on your level of technical skill, it might be easy or it could be quite baffling. Um, it's easy to overlook the back end stuff like technical SEO um, and that's stuff that if you get it wrong, it can actually have a real impact on the success of your site, not necessarily how it looks, but in the back end, how Google uh, crawls it and how they index it and how they present it in search options, uh, search pages. Um, another con that I would share that people don't like to hear, but just because you think it looks nice, doesn't mean it's actually going to get you the results that you want. So the client that I talked about a little while ago who had got their graphic designer to build a beautiful site, but they're not gonna make any sales because it looks nice, but it's not been structured in a way to encourage sales. Or you have the option of using a website designer and developer. So pricing wise, that can start from one to 2000 for a very, very basic site. And depending on the complexity of what you're after and what sort of platform they build it on, it can go way up from there. Um, pros, theoretically, you should be getting a much better site, but you do have to choose a really good designer. Um, and you don't have to do it yourself, you can let a pro build it. Cons being you're obviously going to have to pay for your website developer. You might have to pay for site updates if the CMS is too hard to understand, or like Hayley said, some web designers don't actually give you the ability to change your own details, uh, make your own changes. They do it themselves, whether that's in a retainer um, situation or whether um, you just pay per 20 minutes or half an hour for the changes. Um, and not all web designers are created equal. So there are people that know what they're doing and there are people who are like me five years ago, just learning. And when I think about the first sites, well, my, my own first site that I built, that I built, um, it's really cringeworthy, but I've learned a lot in five years. So the costs of saving money in my last, in the last um, presentation I did with Hayley, I put this slide up, but we've had our little fight now and I think this one's probably a better depiction of reality. <laughs> but Hayley, so... I'm not so hot on this next one. I <laughs> want to go back to the first picture. Sorry. <laughs> I did it 
ridiculously long time deciding which side to put marketing and which finance. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, there is a really fine balance between paying for professional help and doing it yourself and getting it not quite right, not quite hitting the targets. So for me, the question is, can you, can you afford an underperforming website? But Hayley, I'd be keen to hear your take on that. I think for me, you know, that is a valid point. Can you afford, I mean, what's the point in even having a website if it's not performing? But for me, I'm looking at it more from a cash flow point of view. Like, there is no point in killing the business to have a big fancy website um, if, you know, if we then can't actually run the business. So there's got to be that fine line between, yes, we've got to be fantastic and have the best thing we possibly can, but somewhere along the line, if cash flow is an issue, we've actually got to make sure that we preserve the cash. And, and maybe it's a case of we actually plan the website with here is our little brochure site, but with the intention that as the business grows and as we do things, then, then we can actually add on the rest of it. Um, and I think that's, you know, it comes back down to the business plan, the marketing strategy, and actually then we can look at it from a financial perspective and go, right, what can we afford to do now? What is going to be the impact on that if we spend this money now? And then what is, when are we likely to be able to do the next stage? So I completely agree that at some stage you do actually need to have a professional in. I mean, I've even had Catherine look at my website. I built my own website. I thought it was amazing. Um, and at some point, you know, we, we'd morphed into this business that we are now. Like I'd never actually thought I would be doing deep work, but we are. And so Catherine actually took hold of my website and, and made some changes and made me put my photo, my face on the website, which was not comfortable, but okay, it's there. And it has actually really improved. So we've got a lot more comments coming in about our website. And it was just, it, I think it's, that that stage you do need to have that professional to come in because we all work really well at our strengths. Um, I'm not a web developer. I know enough to be dangerous, but I, I don't know enough to actually make a website work for someone. And I think that's where we can have it there to start out with, but at some point, and, and let's just say, you know, we can have the bread and the milk and the self-raising flour and all that sort of stuff, but at some point we need to have that oven to be able to turn what we've got into something worthwhile. I just made that up. <laughs> I was just thinking, I, thought I was the queen of obscure analogies. No, no. We're, I think maybe we do a webinar about who can actually, maybe we need to do a poll. Poll on Instagram. <laughs> No, I think you're right. You did make one comment that I just wanted to pick up on. People making comments about how good your website is is not necessarily a measure of success if they're not doing what oh. you to do, if they're not signing up for your service. Like getting compliments is lovely, but it's even better to get sales or get email addresses or whatever it is that you want. And if your mum says your website's lovely, <laughs> Take it with a grain no of salt. <laughs> like, that's really sweet, but mum's possibly not the best judge of whether that's an effective uh, website or not. So then, um, it, do you actually do a review to like a, a quick 10 minute review type thing where you can actually say your website sucks or you're doing quite well or? How do people know whether their website is actually performing or not? Well, having an objective and measuring it is one good way. I'm happy to book, like if anybody wants a 10, 10 to 15 minutes of my time to look at their, probably only be homepage, but say what I think, then I'm very happy to do that as long as they understand that I'm quite honest. So. I will tell you if your baby is ugly um, in the nicest, nicest possible way. So I am happy to do that. But yeah, it's really about setting the objectives. Get somebody else to look at it. Get somebody who 
would love to see you fail quite secretly. Get them to tell you what they think of your website because they'll have some barbed comments that there's possibly some truth to. Or book some time with me. Just drop me an email and I'm happy to do that for people. Um, I haven't got very much further to go, but the next two slides are written in sarcasm font for those of you who are unfamiliar with them. So the best way to waste money on a website is don't worry about thinking what your site visitors might want. Don't make it clear above the fold what you do or who you do it for. So above the fold is that old fashioned term when we used to have big newspapers. So pretty much the what you see here is considered above the fold. And if somebody can't tell when they land on your website what you do or who you do it for, then you've failed. Even if it looks really pretty, even if your mum likes it, even if people tell you that it's nice, if you're not making it clear what you do and who for, then um, you've wasted your money. Um, also, make it hard for people to decide whether you're right for them. And the best way to do that is to not have any flavour or personality or anything that gives a hint of who you are and what you're like. Um, probably a lot of people on the call know that I used to, on my website, I used to be very bland. I used to pretend I had a team behind me. I used to say very boring things because I didn't want people to know that it was just me. And also I'd come from a background where I was used to writing in a corporate voice and I was very businessy talk. As soon as I got rid of that and talked like me and used my sense of humor and that lovely before or that lovely after <laughs> picture that Haley showed right at the beginning of the presentation that really connected with people. And I'm sure I repel some people and that's great because that's not wasting my time or theirs because if they're repelled by what they see, um, to me, that's a good thing because we weren't gonna be a good fit anyway. Um, another good way of wasting money is to be as opaque as possible. Use as much industry jargon and acronyms that you need to, to come across as an expert and to baffle people. Um, I see this an awful lot, is people assuming that the people visiting their site have the same level of knowledge and use all sorts of jargon that makes no sense whatsoever. And instead of making them look incredibly experienced and clever, it just makes you bewildered as to what they're talking about. Um, another way to waste money, don't bother with calls to action. Let them guess what you want them to do next. This is probably one of the biggest failings that I see on websites where people have built them themselves is they don't have call to actions. So whether it's a button or whether it's a link or whether it's a big screaming call me on this number, make sure that there's a call to action really prominent. In fact, I just got an email this morning from um, a copywriter that I follow who said, on average, research shows the most successful pieces of writing have three calls to action across them. And it wouldn't be any different in a website. If you've got a page, make sure you're telling people what you want them to do to make it easy for them. Uh, this is another good one. Make sure it's really hard to find the stuff on your website. That's something else that people who build it themselves Think about what makes sense in their head, but not necessarily what makes sense in somebody else's head. And I've been to sites where I can't find the information that I'm looking for. Uh, contact details, schmontag details, why bother with contact details? And finally, a great way to waste money on a website is to be Google unfriendly. So have a site that's not mobile optimized, I and mean, that's pretty much a no brainer now. And Google has started penalizing people in terms of where you're gonna rank in the search results if your website's not mobile optimized. They're also, since about June last year, they're penalizing sites that don't have a security certificate. So that's like, this is my site here, and you can see the little lock icon Actually, it took me much longer to find a non-secure site than it used to. But if you see this here, not secure, 
so this site is going to be penalised if people are searching for British Cheese Awards and there are other options. And I think too, Squarespace, the security certificate comes with it. You don't, I know there are some people out there that are charging 250 to even $400 for a security certificate. It's crazy because they don't have to cost at all. Yes. Um, having a site that's slow to load, people will not hang around. The statistics that I hear banded about are a maximum of three seconds and if your site's not loaded, they're going to move on. Normally what slows a website down, it's called a bloated page, is your images are too big and not optimised for, um, for web. So if you're loading images, just check that they're not too large a file but also if you've got a small file that they don't look terrible on a big screen. Um, this is a new thing that Google has just introduced. They're now preferring sites that are optimised for accessibility. Um, and I've got an example of that on my own site, but actually not on that particular page. Um, so, there is a bit of code that you can add to your site. Um, I know the code in Squarespace, I'm sure it's not that hard on the other sites, but you can see this little eye down here. And when you click it, it gives options for people who are visually impaired to just make some changes to make it easier for them to read your site. So this is now, uh, Google is favoring websites that are accessible. Don't bother with keywords if you want to uh, succeed on Google. Don't uh, Poor quality content will get you ranked right near the bottom and it's the terminology they use is EAT. So what they're looking for when they're ranking as well as all the factors that we've already listed are you're showing expertise, you're showing authority and trustworthiness. Now that authority is not just um, you know, talking to your expertise, it's also talking to your domain authority. So domains that have been around for 10 years are going to rank higher than a domain that I create this afternoon. So the domain authority is a measure that looks at age, it looks at the number of links coming in and out, it looks at the quality of those links. So if I had links from the business hub, that's better than having links from my uh, business neighbour who's just started a website yesterday. But if I had a link from the New Zealand Herald or the Guardian or the Times, that would slightly outrank Business Hawks Bay, but only by the tiniest bit, Karen. <laughs> um, this is another big thing I see with people building their own sites is they don't even know that technical SEO is a thing, so they ignore it. And it's quite boring, but it is quite straightforward. That's things like your heading one, heading two, heading three, your alt tags, uh, your meta descriptions. I'm sure if you need to, you can Google, and I know there are like half hour courses online that can teach you what you need. But if you skip those things, you can really confuse Google because they're expecting them there. And again, you're not gonna rank. Um, we've already talked about links. And another thing, and I see this all too often, and it's really easy to do, is you put a lot of effort into actually getting your site live and then you breathe a sigh of relief and never look at it again. Or you know, change it if a staff member changes or your opening hours change, but don't actually ever look at it, um, the content again. So that's another way to waste money. So to wrap and I up. think that's a valid point. Like websites are not set and forget. I went on to someone's website the other day. Their um, contact form had fallen off. And on the, on the contact page, all it said was contact me on Facebook or LinkedIn. So there was no phone number, no address. There was no way that anyone could actually contact this person. Um, and so, yeah, definitely websites are not set and forget. No. Um, so just to wrap up, have a strategy, have a clear idea of what you want your site to do for you. Think about what you might want it to do in the future. Measure and analyze it on a regular basis more regularly than I do. Uh, decide whether you want to pay a pro or do it yourself. 
um, be aware of the pros and cons of both options and don't let your website stagnate. Um, and just to close, I did some more Googling to try and find out who that Christopher was from the quote right at the beginning and I did find out who he was and I love this other quote that I found from him. To become successful online, you only need to remember the following. Good heart plus passion plus web design plus SEO plus digital marketing plus dedication plus positivity plus patience equals success. Wow, that's, that's only a little equation, that one. <laughs> Isn't it? It felt very Monty Python-esque. <laughs> um, and if anybody wants any help, I've got a lot of uh, articles about marketing, uh, about websites on my blog. I've got my notes on marketing newsletter. Like I said, I'm happy if people want to email me and spend 15 minutes taking a look at their homepage. And I also offer a website strategy and planning session or some DIY training if you need any more help. Where and you're you? also a regional business partner um, person, aren't you? So you can actually, if, if people qualify, you, there may be some funding to help yes. pay for some of your work. Yes, obviously not a guarantee, but um, that is a potential thing that we could explore if anybody's keen. Cool. So um, to make this all worthwhile, someone has to ask a question, otherwise we know that you've actually all gone to sleep. <laughs> Karen, what's your question? Well, I am, um, so to start with, I was thinking, you know, do you need a website or can you get away with just doing social? Um, but I think, yes, you do need a website after listening to your presentation. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so, yeah, no, I've got a whole lot of things to think about now and um, yeah, I don't probably really have a question. I just think that that was very insightful and um, yeah, I have to have a real think about what I'm going to do. What I would say about should you have a website or can you rely on social media is you own your website and you own your website content and you're always there. Um, I had a meeting with somebody last week who'd had their Instagram hacked and so they'd had to shut it down and start again. I've heard of the same happening with Facebook. You're also, when you're using social media platforms like that, you're at the mercy of the algorithms. So unless somebody types an accountable into Facebook to specifically see what hayley has been up to and whether she wins the bookkeeping award next month, the chances of Haley's posts or your Facebook posts appearing in somebody's feed are not guaranteed. So, you know, having your own website means you own that bit of space and it's entirely under your control instead of Mark Zuckerberg's. And I think too, it very much depends on who your clients are that you're wanting to attract and, um, and positioning and it's, it's not so easy to position it um, in Facebook. So like last week we ran um, the Everything You Need to Know About Social Media with Jodine from Social Smarty and she said, you know, social media as you're walking into a big networking event, it's not a place where you can advertise who you are. It's about um, just just general chit chat type things that would be with what you're doing in social media. Your website is where you're actually able to show people what you do, how you do it. That's, that's where you can um, shamelessly just promote how wonderful you actually are. You can't always do that in social media. Mm. Cool. Thank you. So I think there's always 101 questions. Um, I will be loading this up um, later on this afternoon and you will all be sent out a recording of it. By all means, take Catherine up on her offer. If, if you've got a website that you just want to get some, some feedback on, by all means, get in touch with her. I know that she's really busy because I keep giving her far too much work. So just bear in mind and, and um, give her some time to be able to do this free work for you. Um, and I think the, the key thing is 
understand your business, get a business plan in place, understand what you're hoping to achieve. Off that business plan, we're then able to create the marketing plan and the strategy for you to actually go and achieve what you're wanting to achieve. So um, don't just jump in and go, I need a website and go and do what it, because it actually won't reflect what your goals actually are. So start at the beginning. It's a journey you're on, you know, nothing in business happens quickly. This is a journey, so just take your time. So down below will be um, all of our contact details and things like that. So you can get in touch with either myself or Catherine. We are here to help you. You know, our big thing is about supporting small business to be successful. So if there's ever any time that you actually have a question, I don't think either one of us would actually hesitate to actually give you some of our time to actually make sure that you're on the right path. Any final thoughts, Catherine? Uh, no, I just, I did see, I'm sorry, looking at the chat at last, saying Linda asked where I might find more info on how to make your website accessible. Linda, what's your website built in? If you're still there. I can follow that one up with an email. WordPress. WordPress. Um, I'll do... I'll, I'll drop you a separate email because I'm sure there's easy plugins in WordPress um, about to make it accessible. It's like just in the last few months, it's become a real thing. I've had people, um, you know, even have a, I have got one client who's got very particular brand colors and they're all soft pastels and it's quite hard to read a soft pastel heading when your eyes are old like mine, let alone when you've actually got proper thing, proper visibility issues. Um, so it is becoming quite a thing to make sure that you're accessible. Just another well, thing. Maybe, maybe you could actually follow up in a couple of days with an email just explaining all of that sort of stuff, Catherine. Um, yep. Paula has actually said she's curious about how to demonstrate authority and trustworthiness. So, That's almost a whole web webinar on its own. <laughs> it is. The main ones, Paula, are things like testimonials. So having other people say, Paula did this, Paula did that. So that builds on your credibility and trust. I know you've been doing a lot of workshops. So if you had a statement or the RBP logo saying that you'd done stuff for the RBP, then that tells people that this organisation trusts you enough to hire you. You've probably seen on, you know, you go to all sorts of websites and there's a row of logos. So either these clients, you know, we've worked for these clients or we're featured in these publications. They're all there for what's called social proof. And that's to demonstrate trust. Even things like, I've got a silly thing on my newsletter sign up page that says 87 other people sign up for have signed up for this email. Um, again, that's showing some trust and credibility that clearly 87, there's a little, that's a little bit tongue in cheek, it's truthful, but it's tongue in cheek, but have it showing that other people um, are signing up or doing that work for you, does that trust story without you having to say, I'm trustworthy and credible. Yeah, that, that's cool, makes total sense, thank you. I was curious about how do the bots sense that, so I imagine that would be with logos. Yeah, I've got testimonials all over my website and there's heaps of them. It's frightening the way that since I've been building websites that the, the SEO works and Google can now tell what's thin, what's called thin content or um, copied content. So they look at the length of time, say you've written a blog post, they look at the length of time that people stay on there they look at the number of times that your post is visited. They look at the question that was asked in the Google box and your, your blog post showed up. How well does your blog post answer the question that was posed? So there's all these different factors. It's actually kind of scary about. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. And if they get it wrong, but then there's they're getting it wrong less and less now because the technology is so sophisticated and developed. Very good. All right, well, thank you so much. You're welcome.
Look no to worries that. at all. Thank you for giving up your time today. On Tuesday, we are running our business recovery webinar, and on the 29th of June, we have personal branding. So definitely register for that one. It's going to be quite amazing, I think, to get your head around how you can sell yourself. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Hayley. Thanks, see ya. Bye. See you all.